Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Sean Dove, a motion designer from Melbourne, Australia. And today we're gonna to take a look at another Cinema 4D quick tip. I know it's been a minute since we've caught up, but I've been getting a few comments from you guys that I sound like a younger, I guess more successful, Chris Hemsworth, AKA Thor. Well, I thought that was quite fitting as for today's quick tip, we're gonna take a look at how we can create this fun cartoon impact smoke that I've used to show the power of Thor's hammer. Yeah, all right guys, with that said, let's jump in, we'll go have a play. Okay guys, let's get straight into it. So to define the shape of our cartoon impact smoke, we're actually gonna be using splines, but more specifically, most splines. So let's come up to MoGraph and add a most spline into our scene. Let's rotate it 90 degrees on X so it's facing us. And now this point on the far left, this is gonna be our initial impact point and where our smoke is gonna go outwards from there. I found most splines worked great for this technique because we get access to all these great modifiers, which is gonna allow us to try new things quickly and really design how we want our smoke to look. So let's add a bit more length. I'm gonna increase it to 300 and also increase our width to 50. Give ourselves some nice chunky smoke. Now as our smoke grows out, we want it to eventually start to rise. So to set this shape, let's increase our bend value. I was finding anywhere between 150 to 250 gave me some really great results, but be sure to play around for yourself and find what works. Now we're getting there, but it's completely bent back on itself. So to have it feel as if it's pushing along the ground at the beginning, we can open up our bend and start to lower the point on the far left of our spline fall off. And straight away, you're gonna to start to see some of our initial shape coming back. Now to make this more dramatic, all we need to do is start to slide our left point towards the right, keeping it along the base of the editor. And this is just gonna isolate the bend just to the far right of our most spline. Nice. Lastly for our shape, we want it to grow in thickness over time. So let's also curl down our width menu and just the same as we did for our bend, let's lower the left point in our spline fall off. And now we can see our puff of smoke starts skinny and then gets nice and thick. Let's jump to the object tab of our Mo spline. And what we wanna do is have this animate into position. For that, let's add a keyframe at frame 30 on our end value set to 100%. Let's now come back to frame zero and add another keyframe with the end value set to 0%. My timeline is set by default to 30 frames a second. So now you can see as I scrub through, we see our puff of smoke grow into position. Great, we've just set our first piece that's gonna help build our total puff of smoke. Now what I found was having four of these most blinds in total gave me a great result. So let me unhide these that I've already got set for us. And as you can see, these were set up exactly the same way as the one we just had to play with, just with different bend values and fall offs to create a more random finish. I've also slightly rotated them, but making sure to have them all starting from the same position, which is gonna be our impact point. These are also growing into position, taking around one second. I've just slightly offset the finished keyframe of each. Most splines are just the same as splines in the sense that if we hit render right now, we won't see anything. So to generate ourselves some geometry, let's add a volume builder into our scene and feed our set splines directly into the builder. Let's lower our voxel size to three to add more quality. And then I found a value of 0.3 as the density for each most spline was enough to smooth it out. Speaking of smoothing, let's add a smooth layer to the top of our hierarchy within our volume builder. And this is gonna give us some beautiful joins between the separate most splines. All right, let's select all our most splines and make a copy. We're gonna use these ones to erase our originals to create the idea of smoke disappearing. Let's drop these into our volume builder beneath the smooth layer and set the mode for each to subtract. And now when I scrub through the timeline, we're not seeing any of our geometry generated. And this is because the animation is a perfect match. So for our duplicated most blinds, let's grab the keyframe set at frame zero and drag it along to start at frame 10. We're gonna leave the finished position set where it is. And now when we watch this back, we can see our smoke begin to grow before it starts to disappear. Okay, we have this taking some shape, but when our smoke disappears, I want it to break up more randomly. So let's come up to create, field, random field, and drop that into our volume builder. Again, underneath our smooth layer in subtract mode. You may find it easier to disable your most blinds for a second to focus on the noise, but what we're essentially aiming for 
is the noise to capture our entire smoke shape. For me, having it in box mode set to a size of 600, 200 and 200 did just that. I also changed my random field into a noise mode and increased my scale to 160. Lastly, you may need to reposition your most blinds to be positioned within the noise. Now when we re-enable all our most blinds, we can see our noise subtracted from our smoke shape. But what we want is for this to only break up as it starts to disappear. So we can turn our noise off for a second and find the moment our duplicated splines start to eat into our shape. And for us right now, that's around frame 10. Let's select our random field and jump into the remapping tab. What we're gonna do is animate our strength over time. Let's add a keyframe around frame 15 with the strength set to 100%. Then at frame five, let's pull it back to 0% and add another keyframe. We now have this animating up over the time that our shape begins to disappear. So now that we have this all set, let's right click and bake it as an Alembic file so we can watch it back. And now when we hit play, our smoke starts to build up before disappearing into the atmosphere. The really fun thing now is we can simply offset the animation to start whenever we like by using the offset value within our Alembic file. And that's it, we have our smoke animation set and easily duplicatable to set wherever we like. I've got this little example scene set up here that I want to share a fun technique that I've been having a play with. I'm using the standard renderer with ambient occlusion enabled for those nice contact shadows plus sketch and tune for the shading of Thor's hammer. I've got Grayscale Gorilla's HDRI studio in the scene plus a couple of standard lights just for that sketch and tune shader. I've also got my interactive render region turned on so we can get a little preview of our final render there. Now focusing on our smoke texture, let's open it up and you can see we simply have our, our luminance enabled which is driving our color. Now this looks all right, we're getting some definition in our smoke shape thanks to the shadowing from that ambient occlusion, but let's try something. In our luminance texture menu, let's add a Fresnel. You might be familiar with using a Fresnel to create reflection fall off, well we can use it in the exact same way for color. By default, this looks a bit crazy, but let's change our mix mode to add and lower our strength to 30. Now our smoke has this fun backlit look, all thanks to that Fresnel. We can even dive into our Fresnel and change that white value to a lighter tint of our blue or whatever color object you're using. And this is just gonna make the look far more subtle. Well, I hope that was a bit of fun. I hope there's something you can take away from it. I know it's been a minute since we've caught up, but it's always fun for me when we do. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you again soon. This, this whole thing. The Hansy series. <laughs> Get Hansy.